O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 22. Being a Student in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 6, Education, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 6.5. Being a Student in Canada. 6.8. Student Situations. In this dialogue, Obasi and Sadia attend an orientation provided by the school. A school counselor explains situations parents can expect from their children's time in school. Hi, Sadia. Good to see you again. It is good that our children go to the same school. We can talk about their classes and school programs together. I know. You have been of great help in reminding me about school events like this one. <laughs> Anytime. I know you have been busy with work. Thank you, Obasi. Oh, the school counselor is coming. The school counselor enters the room. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Parent Orientation. This evening, we will be discussing your children's experiences as they adjust to the Canadian school system. The preteen and teenage years can be a particularly difficult time for children. As they grow into their adult selves, they can start questioning rules and, by doing so, try to fit in with friends and peers. As they start to form their own identity, they may also find it difficult to balance the Canadian culture with other parts of their culture. Now that they are attending school in Canada, you may encounter parenting situations which seem strange or new to you. Later, we will go over a few topics so you are aware of what your children will be learning and the different kinds of experiences that Canadian preteens and teenagers can encounter. Let us start with your children's curriculum. In Canada, children are instructed in either English, French, or both. Here at this school, they will be taught in English, but they will also be taking a French language class. Your child will take the standard subjects such as math, history, science, and physical education, but will have the option to take classes on subjects like art, music, and other languages. Students also take a health class in which they will learn about the systems of the body, and another class called a sex education class. They will learn about how their bodies will grow and change. At what age will the children learn this kind of information? What exactly will they be taught? You can ask the teacher for more information on this topic. The teachers would be happy to sit down and answer all your questions about what is covered in these classes and why. Great. I will ask the teacher to find out more. Your child will also have the chance to participate in activities organized outside the classroom, like sports, clubs, or trips to museums. Sometimes these activities will happen after school finishes for the day. This is how students develop their interests and make friends. So even though school ends at a certain time each day, they may not come home at that time? If your child is interested in playing a sport or joining a club, for example, badminton, theater, or student government, this may require them to stay longer after school on some days. These activities are all optional. How can I be sure my child is not going to get in trouble after school or start taking drugs? Well, students are not allowed to use substances like alcohol or drugs here at school. You can always get more information about after-school activities by talking to their teacher or coach. While we are on this topic, though, let us discuss some difficult parenting situations. Here are a couple of situations. Situation 1. One day, a parent wakes up their daughter at the usual time and tells her to get ready for school. 
The student refuses to go to school. The parent insists, but she still refuses. What would you do? If my child refused to go to school, I would drop them off and pick them up from school each day to make them go. My younger one refused to go to school when he was in grade three before coming to Canada. We used to get phone calls from the school director every week. It took a lot of discussion and some strategizing with the counselor and the teacher. But we eventually found out that he was being bullied by his classmates on the way to school, so he would avoid going to school to avoid the bullies. We eventually decided that the best solution would be to accompany him on the way to school and meet him after school every day, so that he was not coming home alone. Teachers at the school kept a closer eye on him to make sure he was not getting bullied. This turned out to be a positive change for him. That is good to hear. Having a discussion with your child about why they do not want to go to school should be the first step. They may not feel comfortable going to school for a variety of reasons. Schools have experience with these types of situations and can help you. Let us move on to situation two. A 15-year-old student joins a sports team at school but after the student joined, his grades worsen. I guess the response for this would be the same. As a parent, we should speak to our children about why their grades are worsening. We could also set a condition by telling the child that we will only let them continue the sport if their grades improve. Exactly. Parents can also speak to the child's coaches and teachers and ask for some guidance on how to improve their grades. That way, a solution can be found together. How about a situation where a student is misbehaving in class by interrupting the teacher and speaking with friends when they should be working quietly? What would you do if the teacher reported this behavior to you? I think communication is important in all these scenarios. I would have a conversation with my child to make sure they understand why this is not acceptable behavior. Students do this when they are younger, but as they get older, they should know better. I would talk to the teacher to see what I can do at home to help. Very good. How about this last situation? You have a 17-year-old student who is invited to a mixed gender party after school and asks you for permission to go. Where I come from, that is not allowed at this age. Okay, but what if your children came to you saying they wanted to go to a party like that? After all, in school, they will have friends of different genders. How about if there was parental supervision at the party, and if you had the phone number of the parents? That is true. If I knew the parents at this party, I would allow this. It is a good opportunity for them to meet with their friends outside of school, and that is important at that age. I understand your concern. As a parent, you want to ensure that your children are going to be safe and make informed decisions. A party like this may be a reasonable chance for them to socialize. My family is adjusting to things being different here, so we would need to think about it and discuss it more. It would depend on the situation. Like Sadia said before, communication would be important. This is a good place to end the session. Thank you, everybody. End of Dialogue Unit